Most people struggle to respond when somebody asks the all too familiar question, what do you do? And because of that, they're missing out on marketing opportunities every day. My name is Kurt Stockwell, and as a StoryBrand certified guide with over 11 years of marketing experience, I've helped hundreds of businesses create marketing that actually works. You're listening to the One Liner Workshop podcast, and in every episode, you'll learn how to create a powerful one liner that'll make people want to do business with you. CJ Curtis is a local business owner. Her cafe, The Garden, partners with HRC Ministries to combat sex trafficking in Spokane, Washington and the surrounding areas. As a survivor advocate, she is passionate about spreading the word about HRC. Yet when attempting to describe HRC's ministry, she often has difficulty unpacking how large of a problem the sex trafficking is, even in our local area. Often people think it's a problem in larger cities or maybe just in foreign countries. When people think locally that it's a problem elsewhere, they might not be as motivated to get involved. Our objective today is to help CJ create a one-liner that is clear, memorable, and impactful so people will remember HRC and be compelled to join the fight. Let's get started. What's the biggest struggle that you have when describing what HRC is? I, I think the biggest struggle is when I am talking about it is knowing that so many people who were once like me, who had no idea that it was even a thing, you know, you think mm -hmm. of human trafficking and you think of someone who's snatched off the streets and taken, mm -hmm. you know, out of the country. And when it's so much bigger and, and darker and more hidden than that. And so part of my, my story, I, that I was a victim of, of sex trafficking when I was 13 and I didn't even know that I was a victim. Like mm. to me, for many years, I was a 13 year old who ran away from home with an older man and was forced into, you know, this industry. And, um, and it was always kind of chalked up to, to me running away and me tearing my family apart and just kind of these lies that I told myself and the shame really and keeping it just not really open about it. And then when I learned about HRC and, Really, I read I read a book and learned about the statistics involved in mm. in you know sex trafficking in the United States and and how it really looks. I you know I was I was blown away. I was you know realizing that I was a victim, and so I think there's so mm. many people victims and just regular people who don't understand mm. the depth of it and who just don't understand that the women that they see walking the streets or you know the these downtrodden women are are actually traumatized and we're forced into this lifestyle and don't feel yeah. like they have a choice to get out. And so I think there's just a lot of ignorance around it. Mm -hmm. So when I'm talking to people about it and just not able to really <laughs> share my yeah. story, then I just think a lot of people might not under yeah. really, really understand yeah. well, why are you partnering your cafe? Why are you partnering? Yeah. A, a right. Like that, so it's local, right? You're, you're, you're solving mm -hmm. a local problem. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely it's, it's all around and, you know, Spokane and the Northwest, I mean, it's really everywhere in the United States, it's sure, kind yeah. of a hidden thing. but there yeah. are, there are just a lot of, a lot of victims and, and people who, who don't, you know, who need, who need out, who sure. don't really have realize that they, you know, have a, have a way out and stuff like that. So yeah, it's definitely a local. So problem. what if we, what if we framed it this way? Since HRC is is a local ministry, mm -hmm. would you would you say that there's thousands in the in the in in our area? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Okay, Spokane is definitely one of the the number one areas. <coughs> for it. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, we're why, kind why of along Spokane? The main corridor, you know, between like Seattle and Montana and Idaho, and and it, they move around a lot, traffickers, and yeah, I'd say our area is really known for it. So what if we started by saying the statistic that maybe somebody could wrap their head around the gravity of it? I think people more and more are hearing the term sex traffic, sex trafficking, sex slavery. Mm -hmm. I feel like more and more people are maybe more aware of that rather than completely oblivious to the fact that it's a problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But maybe they maybe the right way to start this off is, is in an opening phrase that kind of states the problem in in the in the um to as large as it is 
Mm-hmm. So if mm-hmm. we said something like in the Northwest, thousands of women and children are victims of sex trafficking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Would that be accurate? Yeah. I, or that there, there are thousands of victims because, you know, it definitely, you know, there are boys and, and men affected by it too. So yeah. Or if we definitely. said in the Spokane area. In the Spokane area. Yeah. We could okay. definitely even specify that, you know, in the Spokane area, there are thousands of victims. Okay. Cause it's, you it, know, that it, are still it, trapped in that, that life. Okay. Okay. In the Spokane area, there are thousands of adults and children. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, I they think, usually I think, start out, they usually start out, you know, between 12 and 14 is when they get into the life and, you know, it continues on into their adulthood. So a lot of the young adults that you that you see out there and it started when they were young. Okay. So if we said in Spokane, there are thousands of adults and children who are victims of sex trafficking. Or currently. Mm-hmm. Currently, I like currently. Mm-hmm. Okay. So currently in Spokane, there are thousands of adults and children who are victims of sex trafficking. So we start by by stating a problem that anybody can understand. And that's really the value okay. of, 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 of what we're doing here is more than just this answer to the question, what do you do? What this can do for HRC is start framing your mind from the aspect of when we do marketing, we mm-hmm. want to always present this, the problem that anybody can understand. Because if somebody doesn't recognize or they can't grasp the problem, they're likely going to start tuning you out immediately, right? And so when, yeah. we, when, we, start, when we start to, to present ourselves as like an authority in, on, a, on a subject matter or talking about the solution first, and people are not really even wrapping their heads around like, well, well what are you even solving, right? Then mm-hmm. people get lost. You know, we're a very distracted society. So the way you make somebody pay attention is they have to recognize a problem. The second part of this, we want to state a solution to the problem um, that you just stated. Mm -hmm. So tell me about how you guys provide a solution for this. Yeah, so currently we are working on some training to for people, for just regular people to be able to look for the signs and Mm. to be able to spot if this is going on and so to train and equip you know and just raise awareness for it Mm -hmm. is definitely one way that we you know as as a team and as a ministry get the message out there and then we are we have we have a a safe house for women but it's a long-term program and so Right now we're working on getting a short, not really short term, but like another home so that we can have, because we have several women that are already into the second and third phase of the program. My part in the ministry specifically is I, of course I, you know, partner through my businesses, but then I also, I get to do like an activities coordinator. So I get to help mentor as a survivor myself. I get to come alongside the women and do activities with them and just help mentor them and just, you know, inspire them that they, that they have the potential to, you know, be free from, from those, you know, traumas and different things that they've gone through. So, and come out okay. of it. So, so if we, <laughs> I know it's very wordy. Yeah. No, that's, that's good. That's, that's what we're, I'm, as, as you're talking, I'm just jotting down kind of the high points of what I heard. So if we said that the solution was bringing awareness to the general public and providing safe houses for victims, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. is that yeah, accurate? Yeah. Now absolutely. there's a, there's a 175 different nuances to, to that. There's like, oh, well, also it's this and also it's that, <laughs> but in this exercise of just trying to get this down to a sound bite, comma, the commas are your enemy. Okay. So commas are not your friend. So we don't <laughs> want to keep adding comma, this comma, this comma, this. So if we, if we, we, we came to a conclusion of success, maybe we could also say what that does is it helps eliminate traffickers and find healing for victims. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 The overall fight would be, I mean, it's, it's hard to really say like you're going to eliminate it completely because 
honestly, that's kind of a, sure. right. you know, that's a big task, but, but task. when there's a, yeah, but when there's awareness, cause I, cause what we got here is a two, kind of a twofold solution. And we, what we want to do is, is, is state a twofold success, right? Mm-hmm. So we've got the solution of bringing awareness to the general public, but what does that do? Bringing awareness to the general public would, would help identify and eliminate traffickers, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Cause you're seeing yeah. this, you're like, that's, that's weird. Why is, why is that guy acting so weird to, with this kid in Walmart, mm-hmm, you know, yeah, or this, this, this child does not look safe. You know, I can see it in their eyes or my neighbor's acting weird. And here's some of the signs that I know about. Cause I, cause I learned some stuff through HRC. And then additionally, the whole point of safe houses is to find healing, right? And would mm-hmm. you say last, like long-term healing or just? Yeah, just restoration as a whole. That's why my mantra. Restoration. Drink, restore, you know, to be able to, you know, restore the lives of, of the victims. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what if we said this is the solution? We're helping eliminate traffickers and find restoration for the lives of victims. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. if we put it all together, if it's a, if if we if somebody asked you the, what do you do? What does HRC do? And you said, well, currently in Spokane, there there are thousands of adults and children who are victims of sex trafficking. By bringing awareness to the general public and providing safe houses for victims, we are helping eliminate traffickers and find restoration for lives of victims for the lives of victims. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I mean, help eliminate traffickers. I don't know. I think that part of expose, it, like expose. Yeah. I would like, yeah, that would be good. How, um, are, are, we're helping expose the problem. Yeah. Expose the problem. I think cause we, cause I, I think our main focus is a, is a ministry in my heart is to you know, just really come around the victims and survivors. And um, okay. that does, that definitely does and can involve, you know, prosecution of the traffickers and stuff like that. But, you know, my, my personal focus is just helping, you know, the women find freedom from that. Okay. Okay. So, so, okay. So then the, the bringing awareness is, is exposing the problem. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. So if we wrapped it up by saying, helping to expose the problem and find restoration for the lives of victims. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> okay. You're really good at this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've done it a few times. <laughs> oh, cool. Let's stick that. I'm going to stick that in the chat so you can read it. So do you want to, you want to give it a read and see what you think as it rolls off your tongue? Yeah, for sure. Currently in Spokane, there are thousands of adults and children who are victims of sex trafficking. By bringing awareness to the general public and providing safe housing, we are exposing the problem and help, helping victims restore their lives. I like it. That's really good. So where do we use this, right? Like I mentioned the idea of answering the question, what do you do? Um, mm-hmm. This can come off maybe a little bit robotic when you're just kind of reading it. So what, what you'll want to do is just kind of repeat it over and over. So it mm-hmm. can actually, actually kind of naturally roll off your tongue, you know, mm-hmm. and like when, if I was if I was answering this question, I wouldn't just go right into currently in Spokane, you know, you'd go, well, I don't know if you know this, but currently in Spokane, there are thousands of adults and children who are victims of sex trafficking. We bring awareness to the general public and provide safe housing for them. And when we do this, we're exposing the problem and helping victims restore their lives. Mm -hmm. And so that could, and it, 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 it's just sounds a little bit more conversational. Yeah. Um, so there's that that concept, saying it over and over and kind of making it your own, right? So what this does when you when you deliver this message to somebody in a way that anybody can understand, one, it it frames the conversation from the standpoint of of we're starting kind of at this really low level in the conversation, and this conversation can really go wherever it want wherever we need it to or wherever you want it to as the listener. For the coffee shop, you could say currently in Spokane there are thousands of adults and children who are victims of sex trafficking. The, the garden partners with HRC ministries who brings awareness to the general public and provides safe housing. Together, we are exposing the problem and helping victims restore their lives. So you could, you could just kind of tweak it a little bit to bring the garden and HRC kind of into the same conversation. 
Yeah, that's a yeah, I'm that's what I'm definitely going to do and looking forward to that and I know that it, you know, I you know, really want to be able to yeah, share share our heart behind the business a lot more than I have. Yeah. And yeah, just kind of not really confident to do that and so this is going to give me that, you know, more confidence to be able to to share that. So, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, so much, absolutely. Sir. Yeah, well that was fun. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you so much for listening. Follow the One Liner Workshop wherever you listen to podcasts. And remember, businesses that succeed in today's marketplace invest in clarity and reject confusion. A great one liner is just the first step in creating marketing that works. And if you're ready to take all your marketing to the next level, please visit welldressedwalrus.com and schedule a free consultation with me. If you'd like to learn more about StoryBrand and Donald Miller, the creator of the one liner, check out the book, Building a Story Brand, wherever books are sold. I'll see you next time for the next episode of the One Liner Workshop.